Clap your hands, everybody. It's Yabu Saleh to the Sixers. Hello, I'm Ryan, and as you can probably guess from the choice of hatware and the, uh, I suppose, play on Here Come the Sixers there in the cold intro and I suppose, cold open, I suppose, obviously, the literal title of this video. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Gershon Yabusele. Yabu, as we all know and love him here in Europe, uh, well, most of us love him, we'll get to that in a bit, uh, going to the Sixers. $2.1 million for one year, the reported deal. In this video, I am going to talk to you about well one why the Sixers want him two the flexibility in the deal and why that matters to Yabusele and three really what to expect from Yabu with everything here considering all that has come before him so let's get to but before we do the quickest of quick shout outs if you haven't already please subscribe we're trying to get that traffic those numbers up if you could it's a huge help and here we go So for most of you tuning in, the biggest reason you know Yabu is, of course, that poster he put LeBron on in the Olympic gold medal game. And, I mean, it was great, it was fantastic, uh, but that's not the only reason the Sixers have signed Yabu. At least, I hope not. Like, they've looking at a player here who has a lot to bring to the table, particularly since he left the NBA all the way back in 2019, would you believe? He's been gone that long from the NBA. It, it, I, I honestly thought it was during the pandemic. I was a little bit surprised, kind of going, oh, right, he's been at Real uh, that long, okay. And yeah, no, a lot to like there. Uh, so for those of you who aren't aware, Yabu has spent uh, his time since leaving the Celtics and the NBA as a whole uh, with Real Madrid where he's had an interesting career. We'll get to the interesting part soon, don't worry. That's partisan fans in particular who are asking that. But uh, stats-wise, he really, really did show some serious efficiency last season. His fouls committed were down through the floor. Uh, I think it was 1.1 or 1.2 per game, which is like, you know, negligible, particularly for a guy who plays as physical as he does. His three-point percentage was eye-popping in EuroLeague, 46%. Now, it's a relatively small sample. We're talking, I think, around three attempts per game, roughly between three and four. So not exactly, like, chucking it up there, but enough for him to be a factor from deep. Like, you know, he was a guy who was relevant in there. And naturally, he's pretty efficient on the inside as well. He was 65% uh, from field goals inside the arc. So you've got a lot to like there. Naturally, he brings that physical presence. Like Mike Hall, shout out to the great one. He posted a tweet about how he's going to be on islands and stuff because uh, he's a big, big man. Uh, you know, he may not be as tall as some people expect, uh, but he is 260 pounds, which is... Uh, well, me if I'm healthy, but with an awful lot of muscle and a few inches on me. Uh, so yeah, really, really impressive physical per presence is Yabu. And there's a lot to like there for Philly because you look at what you've got there. You've got Maxi, you've got George, and you've got Embiid. Three guys who are going to use a lot of the ball. Yabu does not need a lot of the ball. He's very used to coming off the bench, which is obviously going to be critical to whatever role he has in Philadelphia, uh, putting it mildly. But he also provides you with a lot of upside. Like we mentioned, there's the scoring efficiency, but he's also good at creating space as a result of that. Uh, great work rate. Just and, and isn't going to get you, you know, in trouble by, you know, making himself unavailable late in the game too often. He's rarely in foul trouble. So he's just ticks so many boxes. And he's going to make sure he won't need the ball too much while he's on the court. So there'll be plenty there for PG and Joel Embiid to work with. Yeah, like, you know, in terms of sort of, you know, what he does, it's almost what he doesn't need to do. That's the big upside while still being able to contribute a great deal. So there's huge upside there. But naturally you wonder, why is Yabu saying yes? The deal for you or I getting paid $2.1 million for a year before tax should be pointed out would be, yeah, obviously I'll take that. But we're not talking about your eye. We're talking about a high level professional basketball player. And Yabu would have been very well compensated in Europe. Reasonable to assume, in fact, that he could have commanded a deal, particularly when you factor in US tax, just to be clear here, uh, that it would have actually worked out at, at more than um, he would be getting paid for that one year in the NBA. And so, you know, you're kind of going, right, so he's a, a, taking a pay cut. Essentially, yes, short term he is. Because the way I suppose, you know, you look at this, it's like he would be used more, he'd be featured more in Europe, 
But uh, there's a couple of things to factor in here. One, a smaller factor than I thought. I tweeted yesterday pointing out that he's only about a season's worth of usage away from hitting the level he would need to be in the NBA pension. When you actually work out what that works out to per month, though, it really isn't a lot. Like, he would need essentially to, to claim about 40 years of pension for a million dollars if he's at the minimum level. Now, it goes up slightly, but relatively speaking, that million bucks he could probably earn literally in the year of being in Europe and with and more, uh, purely because, again, the tax benefits are different and a few other matters. So it's not like he's going over just to get his pension sorted out. But it is not to be ignored either, but it is a very, very small factor. The second one is, and it's uh, more ephemeral, I suppose, but does lead into the third point, and that is... A lot of guys want to prove they can do it in the NBA, and Yabuselli didn't really feel he had that shot last time out. And obviously he was like, you know, calling for it on Twitter after the gold medal game, like I think literally the next day. So, you know, you've got that. He clearly was a guy who wanted to go back to the association. And the opportunity presented himself, itself to him. He was going to be amenable to it. And this is where we get to the, the big here-you-go thing, which is Yabuselli, like... He's thinking, one year, that is ideal. Because if he's got to take a minimum contract, obviously you don't want to go long anyway. But also, he'll have basically two situations going for him. One, naturally, is if he shows out for Philly, he will be able to entertain a much better contract than what he's being offered for this one year for a multiple-year deal, obviously all guaranteed as well. But further to that, that deal will also prove, if it works out, if everything goes well, to be substantially more than he would make in Europe, so the gamble, so to speak, is relatively light. At the same time, it's only a year. Now, it is a year in his prime, but, like, if he's only going for a year, his risk for, you know, losing time to keep making up those years of better contracts in Europe is about as low as it can get, essentially. Like, if you're going to go away, one year is optimal uh, in terms of sort of, you know, as a gamble. So he's like, he's not like he's committed to two years and having to sort something out so he can find a way home. Uh, it's one year and he probably will get compensated really well if he comes back. We saw with Vizenkov this summer, like didn't work out for him that one year he had, but he's come back and been very, very well compensated to come back to Olympiakos. So it's not like it's a first, you know, for someone to take this gamble and he's betting on himself and more than likely the risk is pretty low. So what can we really expect from Yabu in Philly? Work rate's a big thing. Like, we gotta mention the one thing which sort of hung over Yabu uh, during his time, uh, his last year or so in Europe, and that was the incident in the 22-23 playoffs. For those of you unaware, uh, Yabu Selly was involved in a brawl on the floor in Game 2 of the Real Madrid versus Partizan series. Real came back from 2-0 down in that series to win it 3-2. But Yabuselli wasn't around for the last three games, or indeed for the final four when Real went on to win it all. Because Yabuselli was one of the uh, bolder boys in that. I think uh, you can argue if it was a suplex or a body slam. I, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan, but even I'm not entirely sure what you'd call that. But Dante Exum felt it anyway. That's the important thing. And the question was, like, there was, like, columns calling for him to never wear the Real Madrid jersey again. Everybody was angry with Yabuselli, because for all the guys in the fight, Yabuselli did the worst thing in everybody's eyes. And the dude has come back from it, like, his most efficient season ever in Europe didn't cause any major trouble, it didn't cause any major trouble at all, the way I said it, uh, uh, didn't really even cause any minor trouble, like, he was rare, you know, his attitude, clearly, like, he realised, I've done something bad here, and I've got to work on myself to get back. And he has. He's worked on himself to get back in astounding form. Now, I'm sure a lot of people in Belgrade still don't like him. Uh, although maybe the ones who wear red and white do. Uh, but beyond that, like, you can kind of only tick the boxes really well here. Like, fantastic for Real Madrid. Knew his role. Embraced his role. Really worked it very well. And was largely very good. The question is not about his persona, to be honest. I think the attitude has come to where it needs to be, and the work rate's clearly there as well, that he's going to be fine as an employee of an NBA franchise. I would go so far as to say risking my uh, voice and saying he may well be what you call a model employee of an NBA franchise. 
The question is if his game is going to translate. And my buddy Connor Mooney made the Meany, sorry Mooney Connor Meany made the same point on X there the other day, saying like you know love to watch it, but he isn't sure you know good for him to get paid, but isn't sure his game translates to the NBA. And I can kind of see Connor's point because the FIBA game is very different, like the way fives are used in particular and how four is like Yabu play off them uh, is very different in the international style, and a, a, a four of Yabu Selly's style is going to have a better chance to look better in that style essentially he's going to have to play a much more i say reserved i mean less featured role uh, even off the bench for philadelphia than he will uh, for any other team he's played for really uh, since he left the nba i think it's going to work right for it whether his game can adapt enough for it there's a fair debate there but i'm certain we're going to see a great effort from him in that respect i have actually no doubt in that respect like the way he has turned everything around uh, has been really impressive so you look at that and you go, right, okay, there's a lot to work with there, there's a lot to like there. You look at the contract and you look at the flexibility and you look at the determination of the young man and I kind of go, this this is a low risk, no risk deal really for Yabu, to be honest. Um, I, think he, I think he'll have a great chance. I think playing alongside an Embiid, who's probably the nearest to a FIBA centre in terms of uh, tool set, uh, obviously Embiid's extraordinary player but i mean in terms of how he deploys his tool set rather uh is definitely going to be a big help for him and naturally you know he will uh, i'm sure have some jokes about so you played for the usa instead of us and he goes well i should have played for cameroon is what he should say back to him but yeah it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out so i think dynamic wise yabu is going to be great in the locker room i think he's going to show the work rate and i think he's going to give himself every opportunity he can to prove he belongs in the nba and on a much much better deal than one year 2.1 million dollars so with that being said that's it for this video we'll be back again wednesday we do videos monday wednesday friday except for last friday and that's where we're going to pause here for a second to tell you about why we missed last friday to thank all of you all of you all of you for your support uh my partner shabangi had a bit of a medical emergency it's okay uh, everything's been resolved and everything and they are very much on the mend thanks to everybody who reached out really appreciate it and uh, love her to bits obviously uh so because i know they're watching so love you shabangi and uh, yeah so that all went through but listen we're back on now we're back kicking it along uh, we'll have a video up on wednesday and we'll have a video up on friday but until then if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you soon